Hey guys, William Murphy here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another video. This is another video once again on Luke's classic mini. Today is the day when I'm going to attempt to do the clutch. Um, I've currently held processes with the painting because I've just ordered some more paint, etc. So today I'm going to turn my attention to the clutch down here, and hopefully by the end of this video we'll have a working clutch where it will go into gear, uh, etc. Um, ideally, I'd like to be able to build up all the ancillaries and get everything working again so we can turn the key and fire this mini up. Whether that works or not, or comes to plan, I'm not sure, but that is going to be the plan for today. Clutch, ancillaries, fire. <clears throat> so, uh, before I get into it, um, there has been a few things I've removed just to get access to the brakes and etc. So, uh, I removed this. This is a uprated mini sport uh, clutch arm, and that just goes down into here and then it works onto the slave cylinder and it pivots and as it pivots it pulls the clutch in and out like so and then as you can move it you can see the, the lines at the bottom go in and out now the issue you have is there is oh, I'd say there's, there's next to no movement within that so the, I'm glad I'm going to be getting around to do this clutch because obviously that's not great that should be moving pretty freely on the uh, release bearing um, so there's the pins, one for the top end where it goes into the slave cylinder and one for the bottom end where it goes through the bell housing. So in order to get the clutch out, I'm going to have to lift this side of the engine up slightly. Take it off of the engine mount down the bottom. So there's two bolts that go through the subframe, which sit on the mount, so they'll come off. And then I've got a series of bolts, one there, one there, one there, and then obviously variously spread around the... Uh, the, the the casing so it's sometimes called a bell housing sometimes called a um a clutch cover um for the sake of argument i'm going to call it a casing today so you don't cause any um confusion so i'll take all these off some of them at the bottom are very very difficult to get to and to be honest they don't really need to be there so when i come to put it back together i'm probably not going to refit those um because well, I'm going to give it a go. If I can get them in, great. If I can't, then it's not the end of the world. Um, quite a lot of uh, engine builders I've seen do tend to leave them out unless the engine's being built, uh, obviously, on a bench or, or a stand. So that is the plan for today. Um, jack it up, undo the bolts. I'm not quite sure how much talking I can get done in this or how much explaining I'm going to do. Um, so if I don't, just want to say that uh, Classic Mini DIY did a fantastic video on how to change a preverto clutch and absolutely spot on um adam campins recently done a clutch as well so he's done a video on his uh and there's a few other guys out there that have also done videos but these are the two that i i've, I've watched i've sort of refreshed my memory and uh just gonna crack on and, and get it done so um yeah if you're looking for a tutorial video this probably isn't the one but um hopefully i can show you what i'm going to do um, i'm going to use various tools and stuff to do it and I can kind of explain bits and pieces, but I'm just going to try really to set it up, set the camera up, and just get on with the job. So, uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get on with it. Okay, so I've got the uh, casing off and the diaphragm off. Uh, inside the casing is the release bearing as well. So that's all off. It's pretty full of oil actually, which 
Um, I'm hoping it's just going to be the oil seal. Um, so I've got on here my Guessworks puller. Now what I didn't take into account is I've got to get something onto this nut. Um, so I've kind of done that by hand as far as and tight as I can. The three studs are in and sort of tight. So that's going to be holding everything in place for this puller. And what I'm going to do now is basically just rotate this nut a couple of turns pretty much and it should in theory just pop the whole flywheel off. Um, yeah, a bit, a bit sceptical at that because I was hoping I wasn't going to have to put some grips on it to try and chew at the head really, but it's looking like I must put some grips on it to chew at the head and uh, well to get it off because I haven't got anything big enough. Um, so the socket for the flywheel bolt is an inch and a half which is here but obviously there's absolutely no room I'm going to get that socket on there and a ratchet on the end of it so <clears throat> yeah and I haven't got a, so a spanner big enough as I say so a bit of a shame actually because I was really hoping I could just attach my spanner to it undo it and um, happy days I may contact the local um, tool shop and see if they have a spanner but it means spending more money on something that I don't particularly well, I'm not particularly ever going to use that much so uh, we shall see. So anyway, it's, the puller's on, as you can see. It's all lined up, ready to rock and roll. I'm now a 36 mil spanner that's been ground out to 30 something whatever it is to make the half inch however it's also been cut in half <laughs> so it does fit so it's a much tighter fit than the uh, last one so now it's just a case of trying to turn it if it doesn't work I've got a big bar I can put on the end of it <sighs> nope <laughs> so There we go. Just clap myself straight in the face with this bar. <laughs> right. Now, something's either snapped or <laughs> that is the flywheel off. Uh, judging by the amount of movement I've got in it, 
I'm saying the flywheel is off. So, whew, bit of a scary process. Let's take these bolts out. Right then, so the clutch, the flywheel, and everything is off. And then uh, you can see down here, this is the oil seal I'm going to be replacing. If you go further down, that is all um, well, water and oil, really. So the the casing itself looks pretty clean. Uh, it's just that it's got a, a puddle down the bottom, um, which obviously isn't great. I'm going to give all the here a big clean up with a uh, brake cleaner, and hopefully that will um stop any issues going forward so looking over at the clutch so the clutch itself the friction material is well kind of non-existent really it's you can see it's definitely stepped but it's glazed it's covered in like an oil res oily residue um that wow that is really bad uh okay so the clutch is, is kind of all needed replacing really that is really warped and basically what happens is as you put your foot on the clutch it clamps against here to engage and disengage uh, and yeah that's it's a bit like brake discs if you've got a really worn thing you can end up with like a lumpy or poor acting brakes over here on the flywheel it's uh, quite pitted and uh, yeah, not in the best shape. It's kind of I've seen I've seen worse, I've seen better, but uh, I need to take some a second opinion on that one because I don't want to go for this hassle of fitting it for it to be um not great. So it's off. I need to start cleaning and then I need to start looking at what to do next. So um I think I might stop for lunch break and come back out in a bit. Okay, so this afternoon I've done a lot of browsing the internet, conversations with various companies, etc. And I think we've come to a conclusion. So uh, my good friend Cole over at Classic Mini DIY sent me a link for the MED Twin Pack, I think it's called. Which is a, um, a clutch, pressure plate and a flywheel. It's about £200. So in the scheme of things, it's quite a lot of money. However, when you actually look at the likes of Mini Spares, Mini Sport and all the other sort of high-end uh, mini providers, it's actually worked out really, really good. Um, so that was a possible option. So um, what I did also look into was just a replacement one of these. Now, a reconditioned one was about £130, whereas a lightened one from Mini Spares or Mini Sport was about 80, between £83 and £86, and then plus the delivery. So it would be around £100 um, from one of them suppliers for a, a sort of lightweight uh, equivalent. Uh, I spoke with Paul Jeffries, who is a, a very reputable engine builder. He said that, to be honest, this is no good. This is okay. You can probably get away with that. This should be fine. Just give it a clean. And um, yeah, maybe um, he said, to be honest, that doesn't really do a huge deal. Uh, it's, it's the pressure plate that does all the, all the hard work. So um, that isn't bad enough to warrant replacing it, which is great. Anyway, for those of you who remember 
the beginning of last year, I did a, um, a garage clear out. Got contacted by a really nice guy called Howard, and he, um, he wanted basically to, to get shot of his uh, stuff or get get his garage cleared enough so he could get in there and he could try and build his mini. Um, so I, I went along with the trailer, took a load of stuff, which was you know I'm 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 so grateful for, um, and and that stuff has helped. It's got to be about six different cars so far, my, mine included, and various other people that are sort of, oh, I need so-and-so, so, you know, the, the, the stuff is, it's, it's the kind of the gift that keeps giving. So anyway, um, I thought about this and thought, right, well, we could probably get a second-hand pressure plate. So I looked on the internet, I couldn't really find any, and if I did find any, they probably weren't much better condition than that one. So, um, I've done a garage clearance, of course I'm going to have potentially something here. So I went into the back of the car, because I've, I've got some stuff in there as well. And I found this. So this is a Preverto pressure plate. Uh, it's a bit a bit rusty, um, but it's in pretty good condition. The actual face of it is is not scored or anything like that one is. Uh, another one I found was this, which I spent a couple of hours now cleaning up. Uh, there's a couple of grooves on the the surface, but it's flat. It's you know it's so smooth. It's solid. It's it's cleaned up. Um, so I'm going to be using that. So that's going to be replacing that, and then we're obviously going to have our new uh, disc plate, which will go into here. And um, yeah, that has just saved us, well, potentially a hundred pound, potentially two hundred pound. So um, Howard, if you're watching, thank you so much. You know, you you already know how grateful I am for this stuff, and you've just potentially saved uh, another project. So thank you so much. And um, yeah, I, I feel I feel really good that I've managed to 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 make use of all this stuff. So awesome, thank you. I, I yeah, I don't I don't even know if I can say thank you enough for the for the generosity and just you know the 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 parts you've given and and stuff. So yeah, I'm super super pleased and 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 Luke is equally as happy because his car's gonna get going back together today or tomorrow, and um, he's just saved himself a lot of money. So. Yeah, awesome, 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 awesome. So, plan of action then. I've got the clutch kit up here still. That's going to get put into here. The clutch friction plate's going to go in there. I'm just going to give this a quick clean up as well um, with some, uh, where is it? Here it is, some brake cleaner. That'll just go in here and just literally, you can see the stuff lifting. So that'll get all cleaned up um, and hopefully that will be as clean as this. Before I get assembled, I'm going to clean all that up as well. Now, what Paul did say was to make sure that on the edge, that's a good uh, pick up, there's a, a letter stamp. I don't know if you can see that on the camera at all. It says A. So there's an A there. And there should also be an A on the flywheel and potentially on the diaphragm. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but yeah, there'll be an A somewhere. And he said you have to get that aligned, otherwise it'll be out of balance. So um, yeah. Super, super pleased with the progress of well, how it's how it's now going, considering where we were this point two or three hours ago, and um, yeah, awesome. I think I'm going to uh, I think I'm going to call it a day for now. Um, go into the house, play with the kids, and um, I have no idea what the time is, but probably look to start making some dinner or getting some stuff sorted for dinner, and then back in there either this evening or tomorrow, or and tomorrow, who knows? So yeah, really positive uh, steps. I will see you tomorrow. It's pretty light. But in the bag, I bought a it's an oil plug. So I got a new uh, flywheel bolt, and I got a new adjusting bolt and a locking um, nut, because um, they didn't have those on this car. Um, oh, excellent, new diaphragm a new clutch plate and a new release bearing and then some grease for the splines on the clutch so um I, as as before i'm not going to go into too much detail oh hang on and the and the oil seal itself i'm not going to go into too much detail because it's, it's not really needed and there are some great videos out there as i said yesterday cole and uh, adam campion let's see db mini's also done one as well and um yeah, some, some great content out there, great videos, great tutorials. So rather than um, 
oversaturating the market with, with clutch videos. This is kind of a bit of a, not real time, but just how it how it goes. So um, yeah, hope you really enjoy what I'm doing. But if you wanted an in-depth how-to, go check out those channels. Um, and I'll leave a link in the description down below. So yeah, that's what we're going to do today. That, and then just assemble the bits up, clean everything up, and then ready for reinstallation probably now tomorrow. So yeah, happy days. Excellent. Let's get on with it. So one of the bits of advice that um, Paul Jeffries gave me was that on the back plate it will be marked up with a letter, which you can, I don't know if you can faintly see, just on here there's a letter A. Now if you can't see that I'm sorry, but hopefully you can. So the A there. So what I'm going to do for ease of use, I'm going to mark here with an A. So you can see that is the A. Because on the diaphragm, that is also marked with an A. And the two of these need to mate up to be able to have that as perfectly balanced as possible. Um, so I should be able to hopefully have the... Because these holes are going to poke through the, um, the flywheel. So I will I will make note of which is the A, and then when I come to oh, that's quite heavy poke them through here, I'll probably make a note of which is the A on here as well, um, and then it can all match up A A and A, um, A, brilliant, cool right well that's that's what we are so um, let's get cracking as I said. So next up we're going to have to change this release bearing. Now effectively what that does is as you put your foot on the clutch it's the fly was spinning and this is obviously going to spin with it. Um, if you put it off of a flat surface you end up grinding the metal out and it would go through through be horrible uh, but what you tend to get is you get these obviously wear and tear items um, 
when you put your foot on a clutch, sometimes you can hear like a whirring noise and you take it back off and you can't hear it, take it back on and you can hear it. And that's typically when this bearing has gone. So this is a release bearing. Um, I don't know if you can hear that at all. It's probably had a bit of noise in there as well. So um, I spoke to Cole over at Classic Mini DIY uh, and he said what you do is you put it in a vise and use a punch, knock it off and then with a the new bearing, uh, they don't seem to be sided, you put it on tap it on. So I can get a socket onto the inner race and then obviously push that down that way and this way get it off. I'm gonna... So um, the outer race came off, the inner race didn't and that is C solid so I've had to order a new plunger. Um, eight pounds or so for the new plunger which isn't the end of the world um, this one's a bit sort of worn on the edges and it's got a few little scuff marks probably from where it's been bashed outside but um, I've just tried heating up that that bush and it's not coming off either so um, yeah that's basically scrap uh, unfortunately um, although the nut on it isn't so I'm kind of at a bit of a stopping point really uh, it's oh, you can see Probably a bit too cold to uh, to paint. Um, so a bit of a loss. So I guess actually while I'm here, I'm probably just going to tidy this walk up, trying to get it a little bit cleaner, ready to be reinstalled. So that looks to me the job. I've got a uh, a grease wipe, which is actually for hands, but they're bloody good for getting like bits and pieces off. So I give that a quick wipe down. Uh, and then get a wire brush onto it and hopefully that will come up lovely. Right, that should uh, should do it. So that's all cleaned up now, inside and out. I'm now waiting for the uh, replacement plunger, which I've ordered because um, it's gone. I don't know they've wanted that that inner race is, is sort of stuck on there. So I've got inner plunger. That's the release bearing to be fitted, and then I can install that. Because I've got the new plunger, just put the bolt on the end. And take the uh, the new release bearing. I'm going to just place it on the end, and then what I need to do is obviously press these two together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a piece of metal here, and put it in a vise, and then just try and push it together that way. Right. So my vise isn't actually big enough to hold this, so I need to, I definitely need to get a new one. But what I've done, I put it onto the end of a socket. You can see. Make sure it's nice and central. I'm just tapping the top of this down ever so slightly and it's, it's compressing. So let's uh, sit in a time lapse and we can see this doing this way. So there we have it. Newly uh, located. Spins freely, doesn't make a single noise. That can now get installed. We can put on that. Uh, where is it? There, that casing.
Okay, so just disconnected the um, spring, which is like the hardest spring in the world. It's so tight. But we're going to now turn our attention to the adjustment. So you've got your adjustment here in the pedal or in the, in the clutch. So you want to... Here we go. I'm going to pull it out as far as it will go and adjust this. So there is an adjustment measurement, which I will get in a second. Let's just wind it out so we can get it roughly set. Okay. So the gap between the adjuster and the arm should be 0 0.02 which is this one here. This is 0 0.02 of a thou, or 0 0.508 millimeters. And what you do, you pull the clutch arm as far as you can towards the inner wing, and then you insert your feeler gauge in between the arm and the, um, the adjuster. In this instance, that's too much. Wind it in a little bit. And you can see that I've got my adjuster on my, my feeler gauge in between the arm and here. And if I just pull it out, it should hopefully fall a little bit. I just want to be able to slip it in there. nice and freely without any resistance well it looks slight resistance top and bottom once you're happy rotate that adjusting nut and then nip up the locking nut. Excellent, right. So that's now adjusted. The next one to do is just ah, that hurt. The next one to do is just to put the spring back on, which is easier said than done. And um, then, when the clutch is fully depressed, it should hopefully push the arm out. This one will go in, and then we adjust this uh, adjusting nut at the bottom um, accordingly. Well, basically, do it so it tightens, and then go off one flat. Um, and I got that information from Cole over at Classic Mini DIY. So again, if you want a more in-depth video, go and check out his stuff. Um, and then I put on the end of that, I've got a uh, locking nut, so you just lock them off into place. So I appreciate this one's getting a little bit long. So I'm going to end this video. <clears throat> I'm going to end this video here. The clutch is installed. The clutch arm is pretty much adjusted up. Just going to make sure that that throw is adjusted which I need help of someone else, so my wife can come and help me for that one. Um, I'm now going to go on in the next episode to go and reinstall all the ancillaries, sort out the starter uh, solenoid wiring, put in the new battery cable because that all was chewed. Um, I'm going to sort the earthing out 
and uh, yeah just just give it a good once over before I turn the key and get it fired up so um, thank you so much for watching it's been a long one I know I'm sorry um, and I just wanted to make sure that I got everything right and uh, corrected any issues so if you have enjoyed the content please hit the thumbs up button comment down below and if you can and haven't done so already please consider becoming a subscriber to the channel it really really means a lot to me and I'm struggling to talk la, 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 la. so yeah that's it I will see you guys in the next one. Take it easy.